Okay, we're now on Revelation 16. So we just read Revelation 15. It was short and quick, but it's opening the second, basically the second half of the tribulation. And we see through the last uh, five or six chapters we've covered how it gives a description of events and different things. And then we see it go back and, and describe them in different detail. And then go back again and describe them in different detail. This is how the book of Revelation unfolds. So let's just get right into it. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, if you remember the last video, we were, that's where we were at, go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. So if you take the mark, this is what you have to look forward to. This will also be another mark for you. A mark of con condemnation. Don't take that mark. Then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it became blood as of a dead man. And every living creature in the sea died. So we're getting very descriptive of what's unfolding here right now. Watch what happens. Then the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the, uh, angel of the waters saying, You are righteous, O Lord, the one who is and who was and who is to be. That's Jesus. Because you have judged these things. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink, for it is their just due. And I heard another from the altar saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God, who has power over these plagues. And they did not repent. And give him glory. So even with everything that's already happened, and now this is unfolding, which this may actually be unfolding at the same time the other stuff is happening, because we haven't even got to where he declares himself God yet, the, the Antichrist. This may actually be happening at the beginning part of it. So even with all this happening, even with everything they've seen so far to this point, that, and it's in this book, and they can very easily relate it to it, they still won't turn back to God. They still won't repent. These are people, this is why God doesn't send people to hell. They choose hell. These people are choosing hell by not choosing God. They're making this conscious decision. Because if it's all in this book and they're, you're, you're literally living and, and seeing these things unfold, what's the problem? Uh, I just did a video today or yesterday about, today, about um, Rabbi Kaduri and the prophecies he gave and how we see those things happening right now, literally unfolding before our eyes. And all the other prophecies in the Bible that have come true. I can't make you do it. You have to make this conscious decision yourself. If you're not saved, today is that day. You better get it done. Because there's not much time left. And once we're gone, you know what's waiting for you. Because it's in this book. And men were scorched with great heat. And they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues. And they did not repent and give glory to him. Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast. And his kingdom became full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. I can only imagine what this is. I can only imagine. I, I can't even, I have to go look and see if there's another description somewhere about this. But if they're gnawing their tongues because of the pain, that's pretty bad. It could be, could be chemical, I don't know. Could be nuclear, who knows. They blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and did not repent of their deeds. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates and its water was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. Who's that? China. Because China owns the greatest dam that's on the Euphrates and they said we can dry that river in 24 hours. They are on record as admitting this. They said we could dry that river up in 24 hours. And they said that that area that the Euphrates covers is big enough for us to bring our entire army straight up into Israel. It's on record. that They literally said this. So, if we see that unfolding and we read it here, would that not tell us that the Bible's correct? It's saved today. There's no excuse. But it's interesting to see the Bible describe this, and we can go right to something that's in the world right now. And... And have rec and read recorded accounts of them saying, yeah, we can do this. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon. 
out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So we know that these three individuals, these three people, have evil spirits within them. And these spirits are coming out. For they are spirits of demons, performing signs, which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. So they're going out to bring everybody to the battle of Armageddon, where the blood is going to be up to the horse's bridle. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Is he talking about being clothed and dressed? No. He's talking about your white robe. Stay faithful. And they gather them together to the place called in Hebrew Armageddon. They know where that valley is. I've seen, they've done uh, commentaries from the valley. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings, where we've seen that description before. And there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. Where have we seen that description before? <laughs> so is this happening in the first half? It kind of looks like it because the description is fitting. Now the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. That's a bad earthquake. That's a worldwide earthquake. We see that same description in the first couple of chapters of Revelations as, having, as happening at the beginning. So this, this actually could be happening at the beginning of the tribulation. And great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. That's a hundred pounds. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. Um, who was it? Meteorologists. Uh, they were asked, you know, is it theoretical that there could be a hailstone a hundred pounds? And they're like, well, we've had them fifty pounds before, so yeah, it could be a hundred pounds. Yeah, fifty pound hailstones have fallen on this earth. Some of them, they still have them. Uh, they were frozen because they were studying them. But they said, if we can get a 50-pounder, we can get a 100-pounder. That is no problem. So, what are we seeing here? Well, we're seeing more descriptions of things happening. And from some of these descriptions, it looks like this is happening at the beginning of the first half. We haven't even gotten to where the Antichrist walks in the temple and declares himself God yet. And look at everything that's happened so far. Now, could this be that I'm reading this wrong and it could be all happening in a, in a line? Well, you need about 50 or 60 years for all this stuff to unfold if you read it in a straight line. All these things are going to be overlapping. That's why it says this is the worst time the earth has ever seen or ever will see. Because so much destruction is going to be happening on a cataclysmic worldwide event at the same time. That you're either going to get saved or you're going to get destroyed. One or the other. You're going to make a decision because you're either going to see it and go, okay, I know what that is. Or you're going to see it and go, okay, I know what that is, but I don't want a part of it. I'm still going to curse God. This is going to be the deciding factor in a lot of people is whether they're going to give over, give themselves over to the Lord and go to heaven. Or they're going to say, nope, I don't want nothing to do with it. How could God do this to us? How could he let this stuff go? And they don't realize that they're the ones that caused it. Not God. They're the ones that brought this about. So that was Revelation 16. I'm not going into intense detail about this because that's not the goal. The goal is to read it. Chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed is he who reads. Blessed is he who hears. Keep the prophecies of this book. Just reading it can open up all kinds of discussions, uh, avenues of study, and new revelations. That's why I'm doing this. What I read, what I see, and what I point out may be different from what you hear and what revelation jumps out to you. So it's, in, it's very important that you take it and go do your own studying. But don't build a doctrine on it. Stick with the truth. St and don't get dogmatic. Stick with what you know. But we're going to read through this and we're going to see where it takes us. And, and see what it shows us. And you know what? In a week, I'll come back and read through the Revelation again and I'll see brand new things. Because so much is happening in the world. That's the way it works. Love you guys. I bless you guys in Jesus' name. And I'll see you all in the next video.